Hi everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can easily create an incremental timeline for your daily planner page in Affinity Publisher for iPad using a spreadsheet app with autofill. Now I'm on the iPad version of the app. However, the process is very much the same for the desktop version. So as long as you know where the tools are located, you should be able to follow along. Let's get started. I want to create a timeline similar to this one with half hour increments that can be used as the schedule module for my daily pages. Now, of course, I could manually type each time out into the cells, and there are some built-in ways that you can create a timeline. However, in the iPad version, they can be somewhat cumbersome and time consuming, and they don't always work the way that you want them to. So I'm going to pop into Apple Numbers, which is the free spreadsheet app on the iPad, and show you how to get around all of that for a quick, editable workaround. Now, while I'm using Numbers, the same process applies to Excel for iPad. You can also use Google Sheets for iPad. However, there is a different process for pasting the data into Publisher, and I'll show you that a little later in the tutorial. For those of you on the desktop version, if you're on a Mac, you also have numbers available to you. If you're not or don't want to use numbers, this same process can be completed on the desktop with Excel, LibreOffice, or Google Sheets. Again, just remember there's a slightly different process for pasting from Google Sheets. All right, I'm here in Numbers for iPad and I've just opened up a blank spreadsheet. Now I've already created two timelines and I'm going to show you how to create both of these. Before I do that though, I want to show you how to make sure that your Apple Pencil is set so that you can use it to select and scroll. Sometimes it's set to draw, which means you can only use your finger to select and scroll. So I'm going to go to the three dots here at the top and choose settings. I'll scroll down to the bottom and I just want to make sure that under Apple Pencil, select and scroll is toggled on. Now you can use it like any other stylus and it won't automatically bring up the drawing function. So I'll hit done and I'm all set. Now we don't need to format any of our cells before we create a timeline. We're going to key the information so that numbers reads it as a time and automatically formats it for us. I'm going to double tap into this first cell and that's going to bring up my keypad. Now I actually want the date and time function. So I'll tap this third icon here at the top left. I'm going to key in six o'clock and hit AM. That's going to add the date, but as soon as I hit next, it's going to remove it and I'm left with 6 AM. Now autofill works by determining a pattern created from your initial input. In this case, I'm only starting with 6 AM. So it's going to assume that I want an hourly timeline from there. So I'll close out my keyboard, select that cell, and I can either tap on the cell or go to cell down here at the bottom and choose autofill. That's going to give me this yellow box and you'll see double lines on the sides and the bottom. I can pull left or right and autofill that way, but I actually want to go down. So I'm going to just drag down and I can drag this to 6 PM. And because I keyed in 6 AM to start, it's given me hourly increments between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So how do I tell Autofill that I want a half hour schedule? Well, to do that, I need to show it that pattern. So I'm going to do that by adding a second cell. I'll tap on this first one again, and once again, key in 6 a.m. But this time I also want to key in 6.30 a.m. I'm going to select both of those cells, and I, this time I can tap Cell Actions and Autofill Cells. And then once again, I can just drag this down until I have 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. in half hour increments because that's the pattern that I gave to numbers. So now all I have to do is tap and hit copy and I can head back into Publisher and paste this into my daily schedule. I'm back in Publisher and I've created a table with two columns, column A being for the time, column B for the actual schedule. I'm going to keep 28 rows in place. I can always remove what I don't need, but it's best to have more than you need than less. I've dragged column A over a little bit because I want this to be smaller. All I need in there is the time and I want room to write in column B. I'm not going to do any other formatting until everything is in place. So this first paste we're going to do is for those of you using either numbers or Excel for iPad. It's really important that you have more than one cell selected in the column so it knows not to paste everything into one individual cell. If I were to tap into A1 here and double tap on my command controller and hit paste, it's pasted the entire timeline into A1. So I'm going to two finger tap to remove that because that's not what I want. Instead, what I want to do is tap and hold and select the rows in A1. I can either go up to the top 
and choose the edit menu and paste, or I can double tap on the command controller and hit paste. I don't recommend tapping and holding on the screen to pull up the command controller because that's going to remove your selection. Now that all my times are in place, I'm ready to start cleaning up and formatting my table. And I'm going to start by getting rid of the rows I don't need. I want to keep row one because I'm going to use that for my header, but I want to get rid of 28 and 27. I can either drag up on the arrows here or I can tap and choose minus. It's up to you what you want to do. So I already have one selected. I'm going to tap again to the right of the number to give myself this drop down box and choose merge cells. That gives me one long row. Now the row itself is a little bit short and I want it to be a little bit bigger than the rest. This part can be a little bit tricky. For some reason, working on the rows and dragging down is a lot less is a lot more difficult than doing it here. So you can see I can just drag this here. For some reason on the rows, it doesn't work as easily. It might take a couple of tries. So you wanna get right on the divider line and just drag down. You can always two finger tap to undo if you accidentally create another table or move another row. But again, it might just take a couple of tries. So I think that looks good. I want to grab my move tool and I'm going to use this middle handle here to drag this down and this up. And then I'll drag the whole table into the middle. That just gives me a little bit more room where I'm going to write in my schedule. So I want to format the rest of this. I'm going to start with this top row. Right now my cursor is at the top left here and I want to move it to the center. So I'll go to center align here in the contextual menu and choose center align horizontally and vertically. I want to change my font to this butterfly wildflower script. And you can find this on Creative Fabrica. I'll link it below. And I'm going to change the points to 50 points. And then just type out daily schedule. I'll select the entire row. I want to change the fill to this orange. That looks good. So let's go ahead and format the times. I'm going to tap and drag to select all the times. I'll go ahead to my font here and I'm going to choose the butterfly wildflower bold. Again, I'll link it below. I'm going to change the font size to 19. And you could keep this left aligned or right aligned. I just prefer to center mine. So I'm going to do center align horizontally and vertically again. And while I have this selected, I'll change the fill to yellow. Now I could keep formatting this, perhaps changing stroke values of various lines, but let's just call this done because I want to show you the process for pasting in from Google Sheets since it's slightly different. So I've created a timeline here in Google Sheets and I'm going to tap and copy and then head back to Publisher. Now because Publisher is not formatted to work with Google Sheets as far as the tables go, we have to paste it slightly differently, but it's not difficult. Unlike the other spreadsheet options, even if I select all the rows in a column and paste from Google Sheets, it's going to end up in one cell. What I need to do is select the table with the move tool. I don't want the table tool engaged at all. So I'm gonna to go to my move tool and just tap to select the table. I'll go ahead and engage the paste. I can either hold my finger down and hit paste, or I can use my command controller and it's automatically going to paste everything into individual cells. Now in this case, it didn't automatically add a row above, but I can always add one for the header and format everything else like I just did with the other table. Along the same lines, I want to show you one more thing about pasting from Google Sheets, and that's that you want to avoid pasting into a table that you've already formatted, adding a header. It's automatically going to select the first row in the first column, even if that first row is made up of two merged columns. So I have a, another formatted table here, like the one above, and it's already selected with the move tool. If I engage my quick menu and choose paste, you can see it's replaced daily schedule with six o'clock because again, it's starting with that first row and moving down. So if you're going to use Google Sheets, make sure you start with a basic table and then do all of your formatting. It's going to help you avoid a lot of rework. So if you could learn anything about Publisher for iPad, what would you like to learn next? Let me know that or if you have any questions in the comments below. If you enjoy my teaching style, 
check out my full length classes, both on Skillshare and my own learning site, The Creator Collage. I put links to both in the description below. If you'd like to learn more about the Affinity Suite, I have lots more tutorials coming, but in the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.